So to pick up on the topic of living off the grid in the city, the Renegades Edition. The Renegades Edition. I would like to go into the option of dumping your money or dumping your methods of payments. Dumping or turning away from turning your back on the economic system that so much enslaves you. That so much enslaves you. Enslaves most of us. And it's the number one tool, the number one weapon of the rich and powerful to keep the rest of the working and the working poor and the middle class and below. It's a way for them, perhaps the most powerful way for them to keep you under their control, under their watch, under their jackboot, under their subjection. So if you dump your money, meaning don't rely on money, then you are taking that power away from them, at least as it pertains to you. It's one less person, one less body that they have to control, to move around like if you were a puppet. So what I mean by dumping your money doesn't mean just throw a bunch of dollar bills out at your window. It means rely less on money, perhaps to the point that you need no money. It could be something gradual or it could be something all at once. It's pretty biblical, the notion or the idea of turning away from money. Money, I believe, is the root of all evil. Money is the cause of many, many ills in society and humanity. When money is involved, a lot of things go wrong, whether it's with family, business, whether it's in relationships, anywhere in any place where money comes in between people, whether it's for good or bad, then there is usually and most often problems as far as who gets paid what, as far as who gets paid more, it brings a lot of jealousy, a lot of friction. Again, money determines your level of power in society today, sadly enough, and it makes for winners and losers. Everyone should be worth the same, in my view. At least the worth of the person should be the same, is the same, and should be viewed as the same, regardless of how much money they possess. It is the complete opposite, though, in reality, in society, throughout the world, not just here in the United States. This is throughout the world where rich people have more prestige, power, access, benefits, more respect, more health care, more care from governments and everyone around them. And poor people get the complete opposite, less access, less respect, less value, both their lives and their physical bodies. They're viewed as less, as less desirable. That should not be, that should not be at all. When there's money involved in intimate relationships, families, when there's issues with money, it usually brings problems. If you were to take money out of the equation, there would not be any problems. And perhaps there would not be as many problems with that relationship. For example, if you care about someone, you don't charge them for any kind of favor that you do for them. If you love them, care for them, if you are their friend, family, or their close confidant, You usually don't charge, you usually don't involve money. The minute that you do, if you were to charge a family member, for example, or a close friend for a favor, then there would be friction right away. There would be weird looks exchanged, eyebrows raised, and the relationship would not be the same, at least for the short term, perhaps for a longer period, if this behavior persists. The same thing applies, I believe, to society as a whole. The more money, the more problems. There's a song that remind me of that. So, if you are a true off-gridder, a true self-sustained individual at the highest or one of the highest levels, then I would believe that not depending on money would be of utmost importance, would be a top priority for someone like that. I suspect and assume that if you're in such high level of self-sustainability, self-confidence, self-respect, and self-dependability, then money is basically an outside influence on you, which, of course, would be something undesirable for anyone truly living off the grid. So you would not depend on it, in theory, at all. Money would be just unnecessary for an individual of such caliber. He or she might as well just burn it and give it all away to those lesser individuals as far as living off the grid. Give it to them. I would suspect such a person would, theoretically or ideally, just give the money away, throw it all away, throw it out the window, in fact and let others deal with it, deal with that baggage. At that level, it would be considered baggage. It would be considered an annoyance and something that interferes with your peace of mind, very high and attenuated level. 
again, you can start slow. You can start small, of course. You don't have to go to the Nirvana level all the way overnight, right away. You could take small steps, baby steps. Depend a little less on your money. Depend a little less on your money. How do you do that? By instead of trying to make more money to cover more expenses and costs in your life, go the other way. Try to get rid of those things that cost expenses. Get rid of that big house, downsize. That's where you depend less on money. If you are paying for that home, paying for that mortgage, even if you're not paying for the mortgage, you can be paying a lot for taxes, maintenance of that home, upkeep, especially on property taxes. If you have a bigger home in a well-to-do area, you will be paying higher taxes. That's just the name of the game out here. Another way to minimize the value or what money means to you, the value that you put on money, is by, again, living within your means. Get rid of the things that cost you money on a regular basis. Get rid of bills by either paying them off, canceling them, refusing to pay. That's one option that you can go about to your debt, which I will go into that here shortly. And don't depend on purchasing so many things. Be handy, be crafty, be creative. Instead of buying things, fix them. Instead of getting new things, use what you have at your disposal, what's around you. Use things that others may donate to you, may give you. If someone's not using something, you may be bold enough to ask for it. You'd be surprised. You may get it and use it, put it to use, or exchange it for something else that you have no use for and someone else does and they have something you have use for. There goes a exchange, a even and fair exchange, instead of having to use money. Again, living within your means is the main way of dumping your money. That's what I mean by it. And lessen the value that money has in your life. Little by little, you may achieve a high enough level to where money is of no use for you. I have not yet met a person that has achieved this level. I will work towards that end. I'm sure there are people out there that have reached such level after probably a lifetime of work to achieve it, and perhaps not. Perhaps they are in a situation where money is actually not an issue. You could be in a community, in a society where money is pretty much not used. There are those places on Earth still, although quite remote and isolated from the major or somewhat large systems or cities, economic centers, but there are those people. My next subject, if I may, is to dump your vehicle to live off the grid. If you want to truly be off the grid, you cannot depend on a vehicle. A vehicle that usually uses gasoline for the most part. If you have an electric vehicle, that's more acceptable, I would think, for someone that claims to be completely off the grid. However, you would still be dependent on the grid since to charge those vehicles, you really have to be connected to a grid. It is very difficult to charge an electric vehicle using batteries, using solar power with batteries off the grid, an off the grid system. Yes, it is possible. It is quite difficult and costly. You would need a very large battery bank and solar panel system with many dozens of solar panels, perhaps 40 or more, and a very large battery bank of perhaps many thousands of watt hours of charge. Even then, the installation that would be necessary for such a large system would have to be pretty big, extensive. You would have to live in a very sunny area of the country, perhaps the southwest part of the country, perhaps Florida, perhaps away from the United States mainland and into the equatorial areas of the world or desert areas, perhaps in Africa, Mexico, Central American countries, the Caribbean. I mean, anywhere near the equator where sunlight is plentiful throughout the year then you could probably get away with a lot less cost. However, the cost would still be large. But to go back to dumping your vehicle, you can choose to live a life without having to drive. And that goes back to dumping your ID to be truly off the grid. If you want to get rid of your IDs, things of identification that control you, keep track of you everywhere you go, first thing that you think of, I would hope, is your license. Without your license, you're not able to legally drive a motor vehicle in most locations, most areas, especially here in the U.S. So you really don't need that car or you wouldn't want a car without an ID. You can live in a place where you need to not have a car. You can live in a big city such as New York, Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, Miami, Denver, Seattle, Houston, Atlanta, you name it. There is a lot of places here 
in the United States, close to the city centers, or even smaller, mid-sized cities, where public transportation is plentiful and goes far and wide throughout the city. Public transportation needs to be very strong and available for you to dump your car. It is a possibility in many, many areas, cities, towns here in the U.S. If you live in a remote area, you may choose to also dump your car, but uh, there will be a lot more inconveniences for you. Even if you live in the suburbs, there could be very tough inconveniences, such as not being able to make it to the supermarket. Unless you order a taxi or Uber or Lyft, whatever car service there might be in your area, or ask someone, whether it's paid or for just a favor, free, someone to take you to the places that you need to go to, which most people should not have to go out to do anything out of their home, away from their home, too many miles to do anything more than maybe a few times a week. You should not have to need a vehicle to go out a few miles away from your house to get groceries, to do chores, to do any kind of errands more than a few times a week. So even if you have to depend on someone else, it is possible, although quite, again, annoying and inconvenient. But it is an option if you want to truly and completely, as much as you can, live off the grid. You are denying the state, the city, or the federal government, whatever is giving you the licensing to drive a vehicle. You're denying them their control over you. You're denying them having tabs on you. You're denying them having your record, or at least your recent record, on their systems. And that is huge for someone living off the grid. And that is something that I would believe any off the grider would want. The freedom of movement without being watched, controlled, tracked, looked over, supervised which, again, happens very often. You go out on the road, you are constantly being watched by the municipality's police, sheriff's office, or any kind of other law enforcement. They are watching you. They are able to easily stop you for little or no reason and check your ID, run your ID, send a request to their departments, and voila, they pull up your information. And a flag goes on your record all of a sudden that it has been looked at it has been searched by police. This is often not harmful for your record. However, it is something that could be easily exploited by so-called authorities and governments, agencies, those wishing to do ill on you. And if you happen to be a person of interest for whatever reason, because you are either exposing someone in power, you are investigating someone in power, or you are just someone that bothers them, bothers someone else in power for some reason, whether you're a protester, you are a journalist, you are a community leader, any kind of person or a lawyer that is trying to push a case. You could be a leader yourself, any kind of some sort of city or county or state official trying to promote a certain viewpoint, promote a certain law, then you could be a target of an agency that has your record and has tabs on you and can easily exploit those and information and harm you in some way, whether it be administratively or even physically. It has happened and it will continue to happen to no surprise. So, dumping your vehicle and dumping your ID, dumping any type of ID, which you should not need an ID to inhabit any area. So, by not having an ID, then you are basically denying those agencies that want you. Sometimes they require you to have ID from having control on you, control about you, control of your movements, your person, your transactions, whatever it may be. That's the main goal of having an ID, control. So, my next topic is to dump your job, quit your job, exit your job. This is probably one of the more difficult things a working person can do, especially within a city, since cities are usually quite expensive to live in. Not having a job basically is a ticket out of that city. If not right there and then, then very soon, you could easily, most likely will, get evicted from any place that you don't keep up with the rents, mortgage, or any kind of other debt whether it be utility payments, any other payment that pertains to your place of living. If you stop making those payments, you run the risk of getting eventually evicted, especially those payments of rent and mortgage. If you don't make those payments, then you will more likely than not be out on the street and soon enough, maybe out of the city, maybe in jail or in prison, believe it or not. You can be in a position there are many people like that that can quit their jobs without bringing too much inconveniences and harm and hardship to themselves and their family. 
whether it's because they have plenty of savings, plenty of money, plenty of assets, such as maybe they own their home outright, maybe they live with family or friends, maybe they just don't live somewhere where they have to pay. So they are able to easily quit their job and perhaps earn money other ways, by other methods, other means. When I say quit your job, I don't mean just sit on your ass, don't do a thing. I mean, you may be able to you may choose to do other things other than work for someone. You may choose to go into business and successfully perform business, be either profitable or be able to maintain, maintain yourself, maintain even others by providing them with employment. It is very possible, although quite difficult. It is, however, a possibility that you can go into business successfully. In today's climate, it is quite difficult for this to occur in a successful manner. But with plenty of luck and hard work and good planning, it is quite possible. You can also just work in a non-traditional way. There's the gig economy, which in some ways could work for some people, although I really don't recommend that for people with a lot of financial load, a lot of debt, a lot of you know responsibility as far as kids, family, payments, hefty payments such as mortgages, rent payments, stuff like that. Gig economy may not work for people like that. It may in some instances, but from my experience, it's quite difficult to achieve any level of profitability, especially in a big city. Plus, there are many disadvantages of it. I have gone into some detail about the disadvantages of the gig economy, the gig work type of employment, and you can check those out in that video. So I will leave it at this. I will pick up again on this topic next episode and I will discuss to cancel your debt as a mean or option to be off the grid, truly off the grid. And then I will go also into the living arrangements, three main ones, the homestead option, the van life option, and the nomad or backpacking option. So stay tuned for that episode and thank you very much. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please look for the next episode soon and please ensure to share this with your friends and family. And please like this content and subscribe as a sign of support and for me to continue to provide this type of content to more people like you. Lastly, if you wish to support this content further, please visit the links provided in this publication. Thank you.